through with what I have planned in my mind. The bullet, the bullet is in the chamber. We're going to get speed on cameras. Owen will let me know if there's speed, and that's when everything goes. Here we go! Three, two, one, go! I've seen better days, yeah. I cracked a day off by calling up some stunt and effects buddies. I figured we'd do a big feature film gag by ourselves. I think you all know each other here, right? We got together to set up what's called a ratchet gag. There's a nasty one in the movie Hellboy, so I queued that up for him. Okay, well, um, this is a clip out of, uh, out of Hellboy. It's where uh, Stinky, the CG guy, uh, smacks Hellboy backwards through uh, the museum. He goes through a bunch of glass cases. So let's, uh, let's have a look at it. Okay, now here we go. Stinky gives him a bit of a thrashing first, tenderize him a little. There we are, traveling. Four, five, oh, four, four cases and out the window. <laughs> Yeah. This is gonna hurt. Yeah. yeah, I love that. Yeah. A lot of nice glass. How long do you think that traveler was, Kurt? Oh, I would say about 60 feet. The nice thing with the Hellboy ratchet is, of course, you get the obstacles in the way, the, uh, the glass cases in that case, which I thought was something nice to include in our own gag. I'm way too old and seen how to do a ratchet gag. They hurt. So we called up a young guy named Dave Campbell. We call him our stunt puppy. He's done some big gags, but nothing like this. I just want to be in control of the mental barriers that take your body over. There's always a little bit of fear involved with everything it, that's big. And when it happens, it happens fast. So if I sat and thought about it too much, that wouldn't be good for me. <laughs> the ratchet will be connected to him. Kurt's the ratchet meister. He had a plan hatched in no time. Is this going to be a long class? We, uh, we have English after this. <laughs> Pay attention. <laughs> you will learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah and still have enough accuracy. Once we silenced the class dunce, we got down to figuring out just how we were gonna get Dave out the window and do it safely. The inside of the wall of the room, we will connect the skyline that runs out through the room and out the window and beyond. There's a lot of homework to be done. When you see something on screen for a matter of a few seconds, the majority of people never realize what went in to set that up. A ratchet's a heinously powerful machine. It'll yank Dave backwards across the room in a millisecond and put him through a real window, not candy. One of the places we considered for this gag was Riverview Psychiatric Hospital. It's all abandoned now, but it's a good location for what we need. Oh, this traffic. My grandmother, uh, they took her out there uh, for shock therapy back in the 60s when that was a cool thing to have. And, uh, Gave her, gave her the juice. I'm sure that the lights in the city went dim when they flipped the switch on her. Good morning, ladies. Good morning, guys. Hey, Gary. Nice scoot. We'll have them in They've used Riverview to shoot X-Files, Along Came a Spider, Police Academy, a lot of films, a lot of TV. Down to the right, guys. Keith McMitchell runs this place. He's the liaison that we have here. And he's told us many stories about hauntings in here, and I don't doubt it. Well, this area here has been where a lot of the crews have seen spirits and bright lights. This is where the actual residents were put in seclusion. Some of them did die here, and their spirits are saying they're still here. Well, the whole creepiness of this place gave me a great idea for setting up the premise of the gag. Something about my grandma and a mental institution, obviously, but uh, we'll get to that later. 
first we had a stunt to get to. You got more looking at yeah, them below. outside. The old tight sphinx they're going down here. Oh yeah, it'll be a high pucker factor for him, that's for sure. The momentum that we're going to take him through all this, coming through that door, this, he's going to be smoking. Something. Air can and a bunch of smoke and do a yeah. quick pull him through, maybe just a little bit of fire or something. Yeah. Kurt sized up the place to see where to put the ratchet and the skyline. Seven feet, 10 feet, 21 feet. It's going to gives us the trajectory. Oh, you can't see it. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's top secret, is it? All the stuff is now going in here, and the holes are being drilled. And now we're getting ready to blow some shit up. I'm down. Down. Uh, Where's that? Now, let's just get them. Gary wanted to put a debris cannon in to just add a little bit more uh, spice to the shot, you know? We're going to probably put that right in here somewhere. Fire those cannons with the breaking of the window so the glass starts to blow out. And we'll fire this one at the same time because this one has such a lag on it, so it'll be a boom. Whoa. The master of disaster. <laughs> we like disaster. Gary Powler's been a pyromaniac ever since he could walk. Oh, very nice. A couple days ago, we thought about adding a fireball to the scene. But the city nixed that idea. Very nice. Let's have a look at uh, the Bertha, then. Big Bertha is canister that we got off a jet, big jumbo jet. And this is the... It was an oxygen cylinder for aircraft. Well, that doesn't here. look like enough to keep me breathing for an hour. Uh, and what we've done is modify it to uh, suit our purposes of uh, a cannon. The bottom. There we go. Three, two, one, five. I like the chaos. It's good. So then Kirk got busy dialing in his infamous ratchet. Run the wire into this plate, out to the crane, and then back to him. Why don't we just go through one of the holes? That's it. The ratchet's connected to Dave, and Dave's connected to the skyline. Uh, about 100 pounds there, sunshine. Ah. There. Now the skyline runs outside to a wall inside where it's anchored off. Even if we crack the wall, this is not going anywhere, because it, it can only crack it. It can't go anywhere. This is the safety. Work harder, faster. Yeah, get that out of there. More efficient. Uh, we've been taking a, an unduly a, a long amount of time and trying to get this window out of here. We have a crane coming, which should be uh, should have been here five minutes ago. Uh, think of beauty. Daryl, where's my crane? Oh, speak of the devil. Boy, you're good. I like you. Here he is. He just showed up. <laughs> we should be pretty close. Big toys for big boys. Oh, man, look at When a writer sits down and writes a simple line, a guy goes out a window. They see the guy go out the window, but they don't know how that was done. All the work that goes behind the whole thing. When I went to get the uh, piece of glass put through the temporary oven, right? only one temporary oven in town could actually uh, Take that do piece of glass. That's right. Oh, there she is. Owen Wallstrom, yeah, he's been a veteran stunt coordinator for many years. He's going to coach Dave through the gag. See ya. See ya. Upper balcony. Uh, the it's uh, eight feet, so we've got to clear that. We're going to get a uh, platform that we're going to build up there. I have a feeling that when we hear action and you start running, the adrenaline's going to take over. We're going to end up having to pull the bag to catch you. You'll be out there by the hedge. OK, just go up and see what they've done. Maybe yeah. take a look now and okay. Off. All right, let's, let's go. Do but what you think, have to think in your mind, the glass isn't even there. So uh, I don't, you, don't, you don't have any worries there. You'll definitely get out past that. Don't wear white, though, because all of the red blood from all the little snakes. <laughs> you know, you should wear something darker. <laughs> this is the temp tempered glass that he's going to go through. And you can see how hard it is to hit. Just before he hits the glass, the glass will be shattered with a couple of bullet squibs. So now the stunt guy will be traveling through a curtain of broken glass. We don't care about the little cuts on your face or on your body. Those are easily stuck. What we care about is your eyes. That's the most important so, thing. Okay. You know, you lose those, you don't work, unless you've got a cane and a cup. Sometimes you're wondering, hmm, you know, what have I got myself into here, you know?
We're in the final stages of connecting the ratchet up. There's, these are our ratchet lines going out to the, out to the uh, crane and coming back in again through the ratchet. The tension of this skyline is really critical. It's got to not only hold Dave's weight, it's got to maintain the right angle so Dave clears the window frame. Do you? This is our young dirt bag here uh, in lieu of our stuntman. So if anything goes wrong, we, uh, we don't injure anybody but a few dirt bags. And uh, we're going to be ready for a test here in just a second. Okay, we're rolling Four, out there. Three, two, one, go. Uh, we did not get off on the right foot. Right away, we had problems. It's just the lines dropping down, and then yeah, the bags well, came out and that sucked won't it up. When we go faster, you know. As the uh, the bags that we're using go out, the ratchet line that's pulling them out has a bunch of slack in it. At that point, once the bags get out towards the crane, it's scooping up all that slack and becoming entangled, so that it can't come back in again. So I want to just make sure that. When, when he is out there, the stunt guy, that he doesn't get snagged up around the neck with the cable and ends up choking. We can't have it bouncing like that, you know, and, and uh, I got to think about this for a minute. Usually Kurt untangles the snags before he gets to the set. He'd already tested things out days earlier in the shop. We got uh, the, the dirt bags on here, we equal to the weight of our stunt guy. Yeah. 100 and something pounds. 160 pounds. This cable here, which is the actual ratchet line, was the one that that's the That's the line that'll go to his back. Back, right. And then this is the carrying shift that, yeah. that carries him out and then... Uh, and keeps him on a nice uniform and level yeah. line. Yeah. Cool. The ratchet runs on compressed air, which drives a piston, and then a line's connected from the piston to Dave. This is connected to a five to one pulley system which jacks up the speed and then a skyline kind of controls its trajectory out the window. Now the force that this thing generates can turn a stunt dog into roadkill. Go! I have ratchets, they're so powerful that could kill a person in a heartbeat. I like the sound of that, man. It makes the hair on the back of my neck stand up. And I've done a lot of studies on ratchets. When we did some of these tests, these were videotaped and played it frame by frame. Go! As an average, the harness would collapse the body up from two to three, sometimes four inches. Because what you're doing is you're changing from static to kinetic motion in milliseconds. Love this shit. Oh, it's, it's, it's not that he's not not happy. He's he's has a glitch. And we like to sort out the glitches. Well, Kurt scratched his head and eventually uh, pulled the solution to our tangled wires out of the bag. Good, got it. Got it. Okay. Okay. okay, that's better. That's more better. Much better. Three, two, one, go. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Old German ingenuity. Fine tune some of the minor details on it, and we'll have the thing just humming. Well, let me tell you this, Pilgrim. Uh, yeah, when I got that slack out, when I got that carry in the morning. Yeah. No, but. Well, everyone's heading home to get 40 winks before stunt day. Everybody except Dave. I think he was a little freaked out. Here it is the night before the big gag, and he's going off the deep end. Well, the jump's going to be from a high building, and I'm going to have to clear a gap between the, the window of the building, the, straight down, there's a gap between there and then the airbag. I have to cover that space. I don't want to undershoot it, and I don't want to overshoot it. Sunday always opens with a safety meeting. Safety meeting. Today it's being led by Owen. So hi everybody. Just to give you a scenario as to what the gag is. We've got uh, Dave Campbell, who's our stunt performer. And uh, we've got on a cable coming out the window. Uh, before he hits the window, actually, we've got a, a bookshelf that he's got to go through. And uh, so once he goes through the bookshelf, he'll continue on the cable, come out the window. 
and uh, we'll have them hanging up there. Uh, the only concern really that we have is uh, uh, any glass in his eyes. Right after the stunt is over and he's outside, they were going to ask him if he's okay. And if he's all right, then we can bring him back in and uh, we don't have to hurry. But if there's anything happened to him or he might be bleeding out there, then we're going to get him right in and bring him in in a hurry, you know? Anybody else? This is the very reason Now, Gary has a special trick for directing the explosive squib's energy. He uses a penny wrapped around the charge. He turns it into a shaped charge. Puts all the impact of the charge right into the glass immediately. Then we, we like to come close to the edges of the glass because that, that is the weakest point of the glass right here, right? You can take your intensity of the thoughts, what you have to do off of the job. When you get on the film set, it gets very, very hectic. I want to take these photos like that. No, oh, it's tough. First to move fucking lights around, and then to move the cameras around. It's like, come on, guys, let's get this shit together. Yeah, well, now it's Gary's turn to get puckered up. He knows he's got to blow the glass precisely at the right moment, or else he destroys the gag. Where are the stuntmen? How far do we go? When it comes down to the actual stunt, there's a lot of intensity there. And I've always said it's always easy to do until you've got to push the trigger and put somebody's life on the line. And when it comes down to that, it's having the balls and knowing knowing your business well enough that when you push the button, everything's going to work fine. Your focus always is on the safety of the stunt performer or actor, whatever you're working with. That's, the, that's always the ultimate safety point. Because at the end of the day, we all walk home. Heavenly Father, just thank you for this day and this work, God. I just pray you slow down all the busyness, Lord. Keep everyone's mind uh, focused. Keep us alert and aware of our surroundings and safe. Just pray your protection in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, let's go and do it. No, we. Well, let's take the tape off there. Get him to do a slow slide tape. back so we can check our frame. Go with what I have planned in my mind. Visualize. Everything's locked and loaded, ready to go. The bullet, the bullet is in the chamber. We're going to get speed on cameras. Owen will let me know if there's speed. Then I will give it the count. Three, two, one, go, really loud, and that's when everything goes. Well, we'll Any go. questions? We'll let you know when we're hot. Okay. okay. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. You okay, Dave? Okay. You all right? Yeah. Maybe, uh, uh, we got a brush, please? It looked awesome. Uh, everything, everything went off like it was supposed to. There wasn't one single hitch, and our man didn't get hurt except for a small cut on his hand, which you always get when you do glass gags. I've got five or six cuts here, each one of them from a window I've gone through. So it's a little souvenir for him to keep for later on in life. He can count them all off. Got a perfect timing, perfect on everything. It's exactly what we wanted to see and exactly what we wanted to show you. No, oh, Dave's not off the hook yet. He's still got to fling his ass through another 700-pound window pane and into the airbag. This is the final piece that ties the whole sequence together. We have the inside shot, which we just did, which takes us up to the glass on the interior. And then this is the cutaway from the outside with him coming through the glass and down. Hey, you know what? Let's drop him right here. <laughs> Right there on that very no, small believe point. it or not, actually, an airbag can be dangerous, uh, especially when you got a rookie in the mix. If he doesn't hit the center, if he hits off to the side of an airbag, what happens, he transfers all the air onto the opposing side and then recoils, and actually the bag will spit, spit him, him off. off yeah. and that's how a lot of people get hurt and killed. You guys have been killed. Spit on airbags. How are you feeling about this first jump here? 
Oh, it's stepping into the unknown for me. Well, to match the ratchet angle, Dave's got to jump and spin backwards just before he goes through the window. It's tough. You ready to go? Yeah, good. Dave's first kick at the can was not good. He was already way out the window before he could get himself turned around. Yeah, and his second time was nasty. He was way short and he almost missed the bag. That time running through, I got there on my left foot instead of my right. right yeah. It's a matter of thrust for me, not yeah, so yeah, much I speed. Yeah, I know it and is. Now that I'm turning backwards before I get there and I jump off my left, I lost my speed. Go up to do another one. Yeah, one okay. more. Just, you know, just try to get it clear in your mind. Walk up there very calmly. Go up and do another one. Uh, because it's got to come from you. Nobody can help you in this one. It's got to come from you. So think it out. And yeah. this is when the tough get going. Yeah. When the going is tough. And then the next one, the adrenaline will get you out of there. The first time he came out and he didn't hit his mark, he didn't come out far enough and he didn't get himself around far enough. And, and it, it threw off his confidence. And then the next time he came out because his confidence was off a little bit more, it went off again. And a lot of guys do that. They psych themselves out. They overanalyze it and then, it, then they're constantly doing it wrong. But when the pressure gets down on you like that, then it finds it a little bit difficult. He just has to find himself. It was good. Okay. There you go. Thanks, guys. You did it. Okay, get your butt up there and get ready. Glass is going in. I'm feeling like I need to just get in my my zone. I I uh, I'm thinking of myself going through the window now, uh, making the right footwork. I've done trial and error, and now is the moment of uh, truth. Dave, push yourself. Push yourself through the glass, huh? Now the pressure was on. We were seriously losing the light. Yes, he's going on my action. Yeah. Okay, that works for you, Carl. It's, uh, it's all good for us here because I think we're, we're fine. Really, if, uh, if you're fine, then we're all good. Okay, here we go. Okay. Camera's rolling and hey. You ready? Yeah. All right, we got speed. Here we go. And action! Okay, son? All right, let's hear it, boys. Well done. It went the way I wanted it to go. It was great. It uh, really happened fast. <laughs> what a day, man. Um, a lot of tension there. He was, he was nervous. He was upset about the fact he didn't get it right a couple of times. And we've all been through that. Every stunt guy that ever does a gag has moments of self-doubt. But, you know, he overcame that, and that's what it's all about. I mean, it's, it's like, you know, it's just one of those things you've got to beat it and don't let it beat you. Here you go. It's all right. You earned yourself one of these. I'm a stunt dog. Welcome to the club, brother. Put that puppy on. Need a little adjustment? No, not too bad. We just peeked that sucker up right. There you go. All right. All right. Well Thanks, done. Team. Excellent. Well, because my granny had uh, received shock therapy in there back in the 60s, it gave me an idea for a little movie to go with our stunt, so uh, a few weeks later we got together and watched it. Well, 
they say, uh, they say this place is haunted, so, uh, it's dark. I don't know. It's, uh, it's certainly it's dark enough. I don't know. It's, maybe they'll see if my uh, granny's ghost around here. Yeah. You go that way, I'll go this way, and, uh, if you see anything, just scream, huh? You're crazy. <laughs> ghosts. <laughs>